Okay, it's been about a week since we started this project down here in uh, Turnberry, Mechanicsburg, PA, and I'm going to spin the camera around here this morning and show you some of the stuff that we've done. Uh, we talked about the layout of this job and uh, pretty much what we were going to do at the beginning of the series here. Uh, today I'm going to show you some of the progress that we made uh, during that first week and some of the different uh, aspects of the job and uh, how, how we did things mechanically uh, with the framing uh, and some of the rough-in wiring. So. Uh, let me get, uh, get the camera spun around here and I'll show you uh, what we accomplished last week during that first week of construction. As you can see as I pan the camera around here we've got a lot of the framing up here. The majority of the walls are built. There's still some work to be done overhead um, such as this soffit up here. It's not 100% completed yet but uh, we had to build this soffit to encase the, uh, the gas lines that are running over from the furnace as well as the uh, the trunk from the ductwork that you see up underneath here. Uh, that all had to be hidden away in a drywall ceiling so what we did is we built these 12 inch ladders as we call them in the basement business and we nailed these ladders uh, to the floor joists, directly to the floor joists and they passed below the, uh, the ductwork and the gas lines. Now the gas lines on this end here are still hanging below the, uh, the soffit edge so we're going to have to cut these pipes back inside here by the furnace. We're going to cut them and we're going to move them up and uh, we're actually going to get them up about another 8 to 10 inches higher so that they are inside the soffit. So there's still a little bit of work to be done there. Uh, I normally let my plumber handle the gas vent lines from furnaces and also if we're doing any gas uh, plumbing whatsoever with the actual uh, you know, the black iron pipe or the, uh, the flex gas lines, uh, the gas tight. I, I let my plumber do all that. So we've got a soffit there that we've, we've built to hide that, uh, that duct work. Over here we have framed our wall underneath that three inch sewage waste line, the lateral line that runs along that wall. And we're going to be building a soffit in front of that, that pipe because it protrudes past the plane of the wall so there'll be another soffit that'll come off this corner here that we're going to build to cover the entire length of that pipe all the way down to that end there. As you can see we're getting ready to start doing some more electric work down here. We've nailed on our new construction boxes leaving them uh, protruding a, a, a good half inch from the uh, front of the 2x4 so that the drywall can be cut around them and they are 16 inches to the bottom of the box off the concrete floor. So we're going to be running wires uh, into those boxes uh, later on today. There's another one of those outlet boxes right there. And we already started wiring for some of our switches. actually have uh, one of our light cans hung already at the base of the stairs, which is a code, code light that you have to have at the base of the stairs. And one of these switches here will control that. That, switch, uh, that light can up there. Moving on through here, we have the bathroom 100% framed. Uh, as I told you before, we're going to have a shower, a four foot shower positioned in this corner here. And I wanted to show you this ductwork up here, or this beam rather. We had another steel beam up here that ran the length of the bathroom, ran, ran from there all the way down to there right down the entire length of the bathroom. So we built another one of those 12 inch ladders that I just showed you in the other room and uh, that will permit us to get our drywall below the plane of the steel and hide the steel. Up here we built a little little ceiling up here. We built it 8 inches down and the reason we did that was we had a a piece of flex air conditioning trunk up in here a feed that went upstairs from the furnace that was sticking about eight inches below the floor joist so we had to hide that so we put that in a little ceiling that we built right there uh, which will hide that nicely and then the rest of the ceiling will go straight up to the floor joist in here and we'll nail the drywall right to the floor joist because there's nothing else in the way we tapped off the main feed trunk over there in the other room and we ran a piece of flex eight inch flex duct right along in between the floor joists and right into the bathroom here and we put a uh, uh, 
a flange up there that eventually will have a uh, or a six by six grate, uh, a feed grate in the ceiling in the bathroom that will be able to control the uh, the flow of the hot and cold air into the bathroom. So there's some of the central air conditioning system we're putting in. And over here, this is called your high and low returns. There's a low return and a high return, and that's also coming off the main return trunk right up above here. We've, we've tapped into it. And this is sucking all of the air in the basement, in this area of the basement, back to the furnace to be filtered. And you can see we've just panned in between two 2x4s. Two we just came over here and we put this foam duckboard in the back, which uh, is stapled right on the back side of the, of the 2x4s here. It's just stapled right on there. And uh, on this side, when we hang the drywall, it'll close up that cavity. So that's part of the uh, return air system that we're putting in. And this area over back in here is going to be all storage. None of this is going to be finished back in here. Uh, that's 100% unfinished all back in this area. It's just going to be storage for the homeowner. Over here, in this storage area, down on the floor here by that saw, we're going to be putting in a sewage ejector pit, which is going to um, take all the sewage, all the wastewater from the bathroom on the other side of the wall there, uh, and pump it up, because we're below grade here, it's going to pump all this wastewater up and into that three inch lateral sewage pipe right there, which then that pipe runs out to the street, out to the uh, public sewage in the street in front of the house. So we're going to be pumping the sewage out of a sewage ejector pit, which is actually right here, that we're going to be putting in the floor. So we're going to be jackhammering the floor today and putting that pit in the floor and connecting the toilet and the shower drains to that pit under the concrete. Over here we have uh, brought in a cardboard box there which uh, houses the ventless gas fireplace which we're going to be putting inside a wall that we built here, a little bump out wall here Right down there, we've uh, we've rough framed an opening to slide the uh, the gas fireplace into the wall there, and we'll be using this gas line right here uh, inside the wall here. We're going to be connecting a uh, a piece of gas tight flex gas line to the bottom of that black iron there. Our plumber's going to be doing that, and that'll go right inside the wall here, right inside this little opening here, and connect to the gas fireplace. Uh, we have framed a media wall right here that bumps out and runs down to the corner over there. In that, in that wall we're going to be framing in a uh, large screen TV, a stereo rack, um, a bookcase, and a center channel speaker, which once I get that framed in there today, rough framed in there today, I'll show you what we, what we have accomplished there. But we just build the wall like there's going to be nothing in it, and then we cut into the wall and make all of our penetrations and I'll show you how we're going to do that. That little cutout right there is uh, a seven foot bar that's going to be going in there. Right underneath that soffit up there. That soffit is its standard height. It's at seven foot, 84 inches, which is industry uh, standard for uh, soffits that you're going to hang uh, cabinets off of so that you have the, uh, the proper uh, backsplash and that you don't have any space above your cabinets. Uh, the, the cabinets go right up to the drywall and there's no dust collector on top of your cabinets. I don't like that. Some guys do that but I always like to see my cabinets uh, screwed to the bottom of a soffit. That's going to be a bar there. You can see we have some outlets already wired in there. We have one down there for a refrigerator and one up here for a GFI receptacle that's going to be at the bar. And we've got our spare room done back here all framed out with a closet and we're going to be moving that hot water heater today over into its new home so that we can finish framing that corner of this room. We're going to be moving that hot water heater right over in behind that wall there and we're going to have it parked right beside the, uh, the furnace in the central air conditioning unit right back in that unfinished area right back over there. We're also going to be adding a brand new water softener, which will also be back there. That's pretty much it uh, for the overview today. Spin this around here. 
Um, as we uh, get further along with the project here and make more progress here this week, I'll be sharing uh, all the little things we've been doing to this basement with you, uh, stroke for stroke, uh, showing you all the possibilities that uh, you have for your own basement, uh, all the different things that you can do, and, and, uh, and the different ways that we go around all the uh, obstructions and all the, uh, the insanity in the basement, all the, all the poles, all the, uh, all the beams, all the air conditioning duct trunks, um, all, the, uh, all the obstacles that are uh, always in your way in the basement, how we cleverly go around those and showing you how you can do the same in your basement. Hey, today is a continuation of the job we started over here in Turnberry for my client, Blazy. Let me turn this camera around here and let's talk about some of the amenities in this basement project. Okay, the first thing that I wanted to show you was that we have completed the installation of our basement window. Uh, we took out a hopper sized window that used to be up in the uh, almost the ceiling there on that wall and we've put in an egress escape window that is code approved here in uh, this local township that we're working in. And this window would be approved anywhere in the United States. Uh, it complies with the uh, international BOCA codes. And let's take a look at this here. You can see we We've actually cut the block out. The masonry units that were uh, surrounding the old window have been cut. And inside that cut, we've installed two jack studs. Those are studs, pieces of wood that hold up the header that supports the house above. And there's two jack studs on each side. And all this wood that we put in around the window is treated lumber so it doesn't rot out. And outside here, if I can open up this uh, open up this window here. We've got the um, the well outside that holds the earth back. And uh, it's made out of like a PVC plastic material. It's very strong and uh, never needs painted. There's no maintenance whatsoever. And we filled the well with small crushed stone to uh, uh, keep the water from filling up and coming inside the window. We actually dug that down the whole way to the footer and filled it back up with crushed stone. So the water can sift down through those stones and catch the exterior foundation drain. So that's our code approved window and that was a big part of the project and that's something that the township demanded that we do in order to finish the basement. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was our little half wall. As you can see we've built a wall that's 36 inches tall here and um, that's going to support a little countertop and a couple cabinets, shallow cabinets, actually wall cabinets that we're going to sit on the floor that are 12 inches deep. Uh, they're going to sit right over here in this pocket here in this 12 inch deep pocket and they're going to run from here all the way down to the exterior wall that we framed. It's 36 inches tall. It's actually 34 and a half inches now and when we, when we get the top on it it'll finish out at 36. Um, the pole that's coming up through the middle is going to be cleverly hidden in the half wall. It will be boxed out and uh, it will be drywalled. And the top will go right around that pole. So there's our half wall. We've also incorporated a very small uh, gas fireplace, ventless gas fireplace. This doesn't need vented outside. And uh, that fireplace is about 30 inches tall by 30 inches wide and only about 16 inches deep. So we really didn't have to create much depth to put this little guy in there. It didn't eat up much floor space at all. Uh, we also connected it to a gas line right here. As you can see, we connected a piece of what's called gas tight to the bottom. That's that yellow flexible pipe that's coming off the bottom and that runs over and goes right into the bottom of the fireplace. And that was done by our plumber who's registered to work with gas tight and gas fittings in this township. That, that type of work should never be done by the homeowner. It should always be done by a registered plumber someone who was certified to work with it. We've got our uh, stereo wall here. We have framed in a 30, I think like a 32 by 48 inch what will be a birch bookcase right there. And we've created a nice cavity in the center here 
where the homeowner is going to put a large TV in the wall and that's going to be built into a drywall recessed area and below there that long rectangular area there that's going to be a, um, a birch stereo cabinet build-in where he's going to have some components below the TV that will connect up into the TV behind the scenes there and on the end we've got our utility door that goes in there to service the pump and that was all incorporated into that wall and on the end there there's a seven foot cavity you can see there with a little soffit overhead with a light in it that is going to hold a seven foot bar it's not a wet bar it's just going to be upper and lower cabinets in that seven foot area and a little refrigerator in the middle kind of like a little beverage center there the other thing that I wanted to show you guys uh, that's a, a bit of a mystery for a lot of folks is the soffits. And the soffits are these uh, areas overhead that are lower than the high ceiling. And they're lower because they're hiding something. Soffits are always hiding something. Now this particular soffit over here is hiding this flexible ductwork up inside there that came down about 8 inches. So we built this soffit right here the whole way around this corner here and down that wall and connected it to that other soffit which is housing an 8 inch steel beam up in there. We've got a steel beam running the whole way down there so we built this soffit to hide it. And then we have the higher ceiling outside the soffits which in this basement are going to be a drop ceiling at the homeowner's request. A lot of times we'll do drywall as well but this is going to be a drop ceiling within the confines of the soffit edge here. Right there we've installed an 8 inch air conditioning feed in the ceiling which runs right over and taps into the furnace in the other room and on that wall right there our HVAC fella has put in a low and a high return which will draw the air back out of this room. So getting cross ventilation and proper filtered air in the basement is very important. Um, so we've got the feed bringing the fresh air in and we've got the return air high and low returns on that wall that will take uh, the the air back out and filter it out here in the main room we have another soffit as you can see there there's kinda of like a ladder on the side that we've built every two foot that's just two by fours every two foot in the center and this soffit was built to hide the ductwork that's coming off of the furnace that is hidden in that closet over there. So we've built ourselves a nice soffit which hides the the ductwork the whole way down and then we go to the higher ceiling on each side of this soffit where there will be drop ceilings installed up in this area here. So we duck underneath the soffit here and on the other side we go back up to another high ceiling that will incorporate another drop ceiling. One more soffit to show you. Now this soffit over here is housing a sewage lateral line which takes the sewage from the bathrooms and the kitchens, all the sewage in the house, out to the street down in this closet that we built here, right out to the street. So we had to hide those pipes. They were in the way of our drop ceiling. So we built a very long, it's like 20 27, 28 feet long soffit to hide those pipes. The drywall will go around that soffit and uh, then we go back to our higher ceiling which runs from this soffit edge right on over to that soffit edge that was hiding that steel beam in the ductwork over there. And what's in the middle of those two soffit edges will be a drop ceiling. So as you can see, soffits are a huge part of the basement scape, as I call it. Uh, an awful lot of work goes on overhead in the basement naturally because of all the obstacles that are in the way and we use soffits to hide everything that's in our road overhead. Okay, let's take a walk over here. I wanted to show you what was going on in our bathroom. We're putting in a three-quarter bathroom, which uh, three-quarter means it has a shower instead of a, uh, a tub shower. A tub shower would make it a full bath, but when there's just a shower, a toilet, and a sink, it's a three-quarter bath. And I wanted to show you the floor. As you can see, it's all opened up here and busted out and it's running right underneath the shower pan our newly installed four foot shower that we're putting in here so we've got a four foot shower right here and uh, we had to drain the shower so we, what we had to do in the basement 
So we had to jack the floor out here. And that trench runs right underneath there and goes right to the new drain that's underneath there. That comes right underneath here and into this trench, right to the drain. Um, and this trench then runs across the floor. And as you can see right over here, we've busted it out a little more because there's the toilet flange right there, which also has to drain under the floor to get rid of the toilet water. And our shower line is coming across, and it's going right in, lying right in to our toilet drain, which is then running further down a pit that we trenched out here, underneath this wall, and into the sewage ejector, which is also in the floor, about 36 inches in the floor, right on the other side. So, backing up here a second, we've gone from point A in the shower, and we pitched it down, it's sloping down towards the toilet flange, which then connects into the, the shower line, and then right around and over into the sewage ejector pit, where the motor inside this pit will then pump the water up and take it out into a uh, sewage lateral that will run to the street. So it will come out of this pit, the sewage ejector pit, and it will go up into this pipe that is plumbed in here by our plumber, right on up and into the three inch line and then it's flushed out to the street with the rest of the sewage water from the home. So as you can see you can put a bathroom anywhere in the basement. Uh, it's not traditional construction because you're busting up concrete uh, and putting pipes underneath a concrete slab, but when this is all finished this bathroom will act, look, sound, smell, will be exactly like any other bathroom in this home. And uh, we've already got the faucet plumbed in that. The pipes are all sweated in, all the copper, the hot water, the cold water, the shower head, it's all plumbed in up there. We've got a fan-like combination on the ceiling, which will throw some light and also will vent the bathroom, get rid of the steam from the shower and move air in the bathroom. And beside it, we've got a little six-inch feed air coming in, heat, air conditioning coming into the bathroom that we installed. Toilet over in that corner, and over on this wall, we're all plumbed in for a vanity. We have a four foot vanity going in here, and there's your hot and cold water line and your drain line all roughed in. Up above, real quick, another one of those soffits hiding another steel beam which ran from end to end in the bathroom. We had to hide it, it was in the way of our ceilings, which, by the way, in this room are going to be drywall. But we had to hide that beam cleverly and make it look tastefully done. So we incorporated it into another soffit. Another area that I wanted to show you that's uh, an area that could be wasted space is the area underneath the stairway. And we have steps coming down that actually turn. They come down over there, there's a landing, and then they turn and they come down over here. But we have this space behind the highest part of the stairs that we turned into a closet. It's now full of our construction stuff, but that closet is going to be finished off inside and will be usable finished space with a 30 inch door that we framed there. The door looks just like any other door in the basement project and when you open it up, of course you won't be able to walk in there at full height because there's landings and steps coming down, but there's a lot of usable space in there and if you drywall it and carpet it uh, it's a very nice, clean, new, usable space. So we always try to utilize the space under the stairs, and nine times out of ten, my company, the basement remodeling company, will turn that into a closet for my client. Mm -hmm.